In this video, I'm gonna show you how to build this WhatsApp AI agent bot that not only can be able to support multi-model, where it can be able to listen things, right? It can be able to see things from images, or it can be able to remember or recall things from long-term memories, but it can also be able to process any files we have, like CSV, PDF files, or any kinds of files we have. And we can also be able to add the monetizable feature, where it can also be able to set limit for the free tier and also the premium tier as well. So that you can be able to monetize your WhatsApp AI agents to be able to do it for different types of audience. And also we can have a custom API integrations with the WhatsApp AI agents so that we can have the AI agent here to query the data by simply just calling the API, right? Or maybe like requesting or query some knowledge that's pertained uh, by your business API, then you can have your WhatsApp agent here to query these things for you. So pretty much that's what we're gonna build in this video, right? Three things will make your WhatsApp AI agent here very, very more powerful. Now, what we're not gonna cover in this video is how you can be able to set up your WhatsApp AI agents or how you can be able to create long-term memory because in the previous couple of videos, I have already done so, which you can check out these video right here. But what I'm gonna show you in this video is how you can be able to add those three additional features onto your WhatsApp agents so that you can be able to bring more revenue or more value to your business by having your WhatsApp AI agent here to basically help you to make money and grow your business 24 seven. So with that being said, if you're interested, let's get into it. All right, so before we jump in, a quick intro for those who are new here. My name is Eric and I have spent years as a senior software engineer at companies like Amazon, AWS, and Microsoft. And I have started this YouTube channel to share everything I have learned along the way, from AI encoding to automations, Web3, career developments, and more, all broken down into practical tutorials that you can actually follow. So if you're ready to level up, make sure to check out my YouTube channel and hit that subscribe button. Now let's get back to the video. All right, so in that case, let me show you how this workflow works. So here you can see that this is the NAN workflow and basically this is the start for the WhatsApp trigger and this is the end for sending the response back to the user. And what we have between here is basically the entire AI agents or the entire data processing, right? So what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna show you how this works. So here you can see that I have a brand new chat window open and this number here is gonna be the WhatsApp AI agent number. So whenever we send a message, this number right here, the WhatsApp AI agent workflow is gonna be getting triggered. So here uh, we have our workflow being active already. And then before we test it, I also want to show you the tables that we have inside of our database so that you know exactly what we're working with. So right now you can see that we have two tables mainly. One is the user table. We're just going to start completely from scratch with the data. And also in terms of the chat history, I have also delete all of them as well so that we don't have any previous chat history as well. Okay. So pretend that I'm the new user here. I'm just going to send a message here saying that hi there. All right, so now back to NAN. This is the executions that we just get ran. And basically when we send a message, the WhatsApp trigger here is gonna get triggered and the message is gonna send here. So let's take a look at the if statement here. So we first thing first check to see if the message exists. So if the message exists, then it's gonna get continued. And here we're gonna go through this path right here where we first thing first gonna query the data from our user inside of our database because we're gonna query by the phone number and inside of our database, like I showed you, we don't have any data. So this is gonna be a new user right here. So here it says that if it's an existing user. So we check to see if the user record exists. So in this case, we don't have this user record inside of our database. So then it's gonna go through this path right here, which will basically create the new user inside of the uh, query. So here you can see, basically the value is that this is the phone number, right? And also this is the profile name. And then this is basically the tier, which is basically gonna be a free tier. And then the maximum daily query for free tier is basically 25. So we wanna set a limit for the free tier users who are going to have a maximum of 25 queries per day, but we can always change this value, right? And return is gonna be the full name and the phone number so that we can use that to craft a message. So here I'm just gonna send a message here, which is basically a static message saying welcome, right? So once we send this message, if we go back to the NAN, this is the exact text that we received which is great, okay? So now, for example, I'm just gonna say, what services do you offer? Do you offer? I'm just gonna send this request. All right, so now if we go back to NAN, here you can see that we have another execution being ran, and let's take a look at what happened here. All right, so basically you can see that this time it's gonna go through this path right here because this user is a existing user from our database. So the record's already added inside of user table. So now what we're gonna do is to check to see if it, this user has hit the limit because the maximum query here, like what I mentioned, is 25 queries per day. And we're just gonna check to see if this user has exceed that. So far, you can see this user has made zero queries and it's less than 25 queries that we set. So in this case, we're just gonna continue this path. And here, once we get to this node, 
basically we try to see what kinds of input that we have, right? So is it text input, audio input, image input, document or video input that we have, right? So it's gonna navigate to a different path here. So in this case, it's gonna be a text path. So it's gonna go through this path right here, which we have our text agents. And you can see that the text agent here has two AI models. One is the normal model that we have. And the other one here is the fallback model. So whenever the main model failed, then it's gonna rely on the fallback model to making sure that the request is being processed. And the other part here is we're also using a Postgres chat memory. So it's basically gonna look through this table name, basically the NA and chat histories, and be able to retrieve nine past interactions that we have inside of the conversation table based on this phone number right here and be able to retrieve all those informations back to the text agents and be able to use that as context for making the decision. And you can see here the text agent here, because we are asking for what type of service does this offer, that is also gonna make a API request call to the get categories to get all the information that we need to be able to craft a response. And here you can see that it's gonna do some data cleaning for the response, and eventually we're just going to increment the query for the user and send the message back to the WhatsApp. And here you can see that these are the list of comprehensive services that this company offer. And here you can see these are some of the main categories, for example, marinas, boat repairs, right? Like uh, marina electronics. And we can actually be able to see this inside of the API call as well, right? For example, in this API call, you can see that these are all the data that we see inside of the WhatsApp message. And the AI here just basically craft them, be able to format them better and reply back to the user here. Right, so basically that's how we can be able to call an API to get those data, right? So pretty much that's how we can be able to use our AI agent here, but not only can be able to craft a response, but it can also be able to call the tools to make queries, to search things, to get the right data based on the user prompt, right? So which is a great thing. So let's take a look at what we can do here. So let's try it with the audio because currently I'm in the free tier. And usually if you wanna use the audio or image files, then you gotta be in the premium tier. So I'm just gonna send a audio file right here, or in this case, a audio message. I'm interested in the marinas and also the boat repair and maintenance. Can you please tell me what services do you offer for these? And here I'm just gonna send this request and hopefully it should trigger a workflow right here. And now you can see that we receive a message saying that the image and voice searches are in a premium feature. So to unlock this, you gotta get unlimited queries and then you have to upgrade your accounts. Now let's say that we are just gonna upgrade our accounts. Now here you can see that inside of our database, we have our subscription tier set as free. So now let's say if this person has paid the subscription tier, I'm just gonna set myself to be a premium tier. And here I'm just going to send this voice message again. I'm looking for marinas in Vancouver, BC, Canada. And here I'm just gonna send this request. All right, so now you can see that the execution being run successfully. So let's take a look. So here you can see that it's gonna go through this audio path, right? So it's first thing first, it's gonna get the audio, download the audio, transcribe it using Google Gemini. And here you can see that the audio agent here is gonna use the same tools and same brain that we had before, and it's gonna process this audio. So basically you can see that it's gonna call the get categories and also get locations because I mentioned that I'm located in Vancouver and I'm looking for service for marinas. And here you can see that this is the prompt that we have, which is basically the user recording for the marinas and Vancouver, BC. And then we're also going to have our system prompt, which basically I list out what are the tools that we have and what each of them does and what are the parameters that we're gonna pass in to basically get the right data, right? And these are all the prompts that I crafted to making sure that the AI here is able to call the right tools and do what it's supposed to do, okay? So then eventually, if I were to navigate to WhatsApp, here you can see that these are the data that we have. So it says that I heard that you need marinas in Vancouver, BC. Unfortunately, I don't have Vancouver, BC, Canada in my list of locations, and I can search in these locations instead. So I'm just gonna say, I'm interested in searching for location in Singapore. And if you were to look into the executions, you can see that this is what happened here. So we're gonna go through the audio path, and this is basically the normal path right here. But what's happening here is that it calls the get location, also the get categories, right? So it's gonna get the, all the categories that we have, and also all the locations that we have. And also here you can see that it's also searching the listings based on the user queries that we specify, right? So like what category we're gonna search for, and what location we're gonna search for, what are the search terms that we're gonna search for, and you can see that these are the response we get from the API. And then the AI here is gonna craft that into an output. And then here you can see that the AI here is gonna craft the output 
Now we're gonna respond back to the client, which you can see that this is what we have here. All right, so pretty much that's how we can be able to, you know, test it with the audio, the text agents, and also making API calls as well as setting limitations and also creating the user inside of database and keep track of the past conversations, which is a great thing. So what we're gonna do now is we're also gonna try to see if it's able to process any images that we have. Um, so I'm just going to click on the boat engine here. And here, let's say if I were to take an image for this boat right here, and here I'm just gonna drag it into the WhatsApp chat. And here I'm just gonna say, um, can you fix, fix this? And here I'm just gonna send this request. All right, so here inside of the NAN WhatsApp AI agents, let's take a look. So we have a workflow uh, execution being ran and let's take a look at what it did here. And this time you can see that it's gonna go through the image path and it's gonna send this request to the AI agents. Then it's gonna respond back to the WhatsApp. So let's take a look at what we got. So here you can see that I see a diagram illustrating the main components of the Yamaha 1115 four stroke outboard motor. And this looks like a reference diagram, not an image showing an issue that needs to fix. If you're experiencing a specific issue with the outboard motor, please provide a photo that clearly shows area of concern or a detailed description of the problem you're encountering, which is really detailed by the way, but you can see that it's able to recognize that this is the image, right? I see that 11.5 and I do see 11.5 right here, which is pretty accurate based on you know what we see here, right? So pretty much you can see, we can be able to recognize images, which is another additional feature, which is great. All right, so pretty much that's how we can be able to do the image processing, which is really cool. All right, so the other part that I want test is basically like what happened if this user um, exceeded the limits. So now let's say if I were to revert myself back to the free tier and it's going to set this and here in terms of the queries today, I'm just going to change this to be 25. So let's say if I have already exceeded this limit and what kind of message we're going to get inside of our WhatsApp. So now let's say if I were to say the issue is the engine doesn't start. So if I were to send this request, all right, so now if I were to look at the NA workflow, you can see that it's going to use the limit check right here to see if we have hit the limit. If we do, which basically you can see the 25 here is not less than the 25 maximum daily queries. Then it's gonna go through this path right here, which will basically send a message saying that, sorry, you have used all your available message today. All right, so pretty much that's how we can be able to set limitations based on the user tiers. And also because we set the limitation as today, and usually how this works is that every day we're just gonna reset the user query daily. So here you can see that we have our schedule trigger, which is right here. Every single day at midnight, we're just gonna reset the user query. We're just gonna run this query right here to reset all the users query today to be zero. And basically that's how it works. All right, so pretty much that's all the features that we have for the AI agents, right? So we have one over how we can be able to accept all kinds of input for the AI agents, like voice message, text, image, with different types of files. And then the AI agent here is able to process those inputs and be able to use tools like servers API, be able to make API calls, get product data, or be able to get special knowledge and be able to craft a response. And the AI agent here also keep track of the past conversations, which are all being stored inside of the NAN chat history table. And also we get a user table as well to keep track of the user preference and also their subscription tier and also basic user information. Now we also have the monetization tier where we can be able to set limitations on user who are in the free tier and also the pay tier as well. So that's pretty much how we can be able to build a practical AI agent here, specifically for any type of business who are looking to monetize your WhatsApp AI agents for a large amount of customers. All right, so lastly, what I want to talk is where you can get your NA workflow. So here you can see that I have a Discord server and this Discord server has a channel called CodeShare, where you simply just gonna subscribe to a premium access to get all the CodeShare and also the priority support. Once you get that, you can simply just gonna navigate to CodeShare, which I will basically upload this file right here into this channel and you can be able to download this and you can be able to import this workflow right here inside your NAN. So import from file, you can import that file and you can get the entire workflow that can be able to do text processing, audio, image, and also calling different APIs and also adding the monetization feature for a different type of user. So pretty much all the features that we just talked about in this video is all here in this workflow. Simply just gonna add your authentications and you can be able to use it right away. So pretty much that's it for this video. If you found value in this video, please make sure to like this video, consider subscribe for more content like this. But with that being said, I will see you in the next video.